work and got a lot of things to talk about today. The first thing I want to talk about is why is it important to handle animals in a really low stress manner. First of all, uh, excitable cattle that get scared when you handle them, they have lower weight gains. This is one of the reasons for good handling. You're going to get better AI performance and lower weight gains if you handle animals quietly. And there's a lot of scientific studies that show that. Stockmanship matters. A lot of the breed associations for quite a few years now are, um, have temperament in their um, EPDs. What's well, temperament? Basically, it's how scared does the animal get when you put it in the squeeze chute, how much it jumps around, how fast it runs out. Calm animals gain more weight. But on the other hand, we've got to be careful not to overselect for temperament. You don't want to turn beef cattle into a bunch of Holstein dairy cows that aren't going to take care of their calves. You overselect for any trait. I don't care what that trait is. It's not a good thing to be doing. This is my original data. My student, Bridget Voisinet, basically an animal that rated a four was an animal that just went berserk in a squeeze chute. Had lower weight gains. Yes, you want to get rid of those cattle that are crazy, but you don't want to select for everything being just the calmest. Genetics influences the score. Now, if you handle animals quietly, they're going to get easier and easier to handle. You handle animals rough, they're going to get more and more uh, not wanting to go back into the, um, into the chute. So both genetics and experience affects temperament. Now, what is the factor that's affected in the genetics? It's basically startle response. If I suddenly scared it with something, how big a reaction do I get? Because I could have an animal that are trained to the squeeze chute, but if he all of a sudden saw flags at the show, he's going berserk because he hadn't seen flags before. They were something new and scary. So your flighty horse or your flighty steer, flighty cow, is going to get more excited when it sees something totally new. Now, animal handling has definitely improved. I've been in this field for a long time. The bad old days were bad. An electric pride on every single animal. And my student, Ruth Bullywoody, went to 28 feed yards in Colorado, Kansas, and Nebraska. And that's really nice that the electric pride use was under 5%. And vocalization score. You should be able to get them into the squeeze chute and catch their head without them mooing. If they're mooing when you catch their head, then you are hurting them. They're saying, ouch. And these things matter. Recently, I worked with some cattle that had, had a very bad previous experience with the head gate. And when I brought them up into the work area, they came through the back part of the work area just fine, come out of the crowd pen fine, beautiful. Responded to the flight zone, point of balance behaviors. Halfway up that lead up chute, they saw the squeeze chute and they go, we're not going. They are not going. And they were especially afraid of the head gate. They knew exactly which part of the facility was bad. Then once they got out, about in the pens, they were fine. No, if you clunk them on the head, they're going to remember that. But handling has gotten better, and these are really good scores. You can look them up online. There's a real advantages to acclimating animals to handling. Works with pigs, and it also works with cattle. Now, these are some animals that had to be handled every day to get a big bolus put in them for research purposes, and they got easier to handle because they were handled quietly. So they got easier. You handle roughly, they're going to get harder and harder to handle, and they're likely to hurt you, too. That's another reason for good handling. Now, here's some scientific evidence that shows that acclimating animals to handling really improves, reduces stress, and improves reproductive performance. Like Ronaldo Cook's work has shown, if you take your young heifers and you just walk them through the chute and then feed them some feed treats, don't do anything to them, or maybe you just put them in the corrals, feed them there, tie open the gates, let them just explore the place, they're going to have better reproductive performance. Stockmanship matters. I have spent a great deal of my life designing facilities. Facilities are half of it. The other half is the management. That's the stockmanship. Just a little while ago, I went out to Big Feed Yard, and they were doing a really good job on handling. No electric prods, no yelling and screaming. The research is very clear. You yell and scream at cattle, that it has intent. They know that you're yelling and screaming at them. That's more stressful than the sound of the squeeze chute motor or something like that. And things are going pretty good, but then you just change one little tiny thing. I moved one person 
to a different position, and I got him to just stop doing the flag like this. He wasn't hitting him with him, nothing bad. He just kept doing this. Put him in another position, further quieted down. That starts to get into the art of stockmanship. What the measurements do, the measurements that I've got right here, what those measurements do is they will get handling down to a certain basic level, get rid of the abusive stuff. But then once I get down there where the measurements are, where they are on this chart, then I can do further work, which gets into the art of stockmanship. And that's going to be a whole lot of little things. In fact, a lot of people that are teaching low-stress stockmanship try to figure out what's the smallest movement you can do to get them to respond. Now, animals will acclimate to transport. The first trip on the truck is going to be a lot scarier than the seventh or ninth trip. An animal's memories are extremely specific. If your cattle get used to you feeding them range cubes, OK, you with your truck, that's a different picture than the corrals. You see, they think in pictures. They think in sounds. If you habituate a horse to tolerate a blue and white umbrella opening, that doesn't transfer to an orange tarp. Think about it. Umbrella and tarp look totally different. They are visual thinkers. OK, getting back to the place where the cattle had been clunked on the head by the squeeze chute, in the back part of the work area in the crowd pen, they were fine, because that part of the facility never did anything bad to them. And they would respond to flight zone movements. Get up to the squeeze chute, they just froze. They started pooing. Poop, poop, poop. And, they, and, I, and, and flight zone didn't work anymore. I've got some flight zone things I'm going to show you. That wouldn't work. I'd roll them down the back. they just sit there and poo. <laughs> yep, that's not good. They knew exactly which part of that facility had been bad. You see, because it's sensory-based, not word-based. Another really important thing is a man on a horse looks totally different than a man on the ground. So it's really important for cattle to get trained to go in and out of pens, both on a horse and on foot. Because when you send them on down the supply chain, some guy at the auction, or some guy at a feed yard, or maybe some guy at a packing plant has got to handle one foot. So their flight zone might be this big to the horse, and the flight zone's going to be from here to the door when I'm on foot. And in a small pen, that gets super dangerous. You'll start having cattle just racing back and forth, uh, really, really bad. Please get them trained to go in and out of pens on foot. Somebody's going to get hurt further on down the supply chain. Get them used to different vehicles. Get them used to different people. And the more flighty the temperament is, the more important to do this. Now, this kind of brings up a paradox. The animal that makes you perfect feed yard animal, real calm temperament, you could do all kinds of things, wouldn't get very excited, doesn't make the best cow to go out on rough range and fight off predators. The ideal range animal is not the ideal feed yard animal. Yes, and it is important to get rid of the real crazy animals, but you don't want to select your animals to just be all uh, uh, Holstein dairy cattle. An animal's first experience with a new place, a new person, or a new piece of equipment needs to be good first experience, because their first experience is horrible. They don't forget. So I get asked all the time about four-wheelers. Let's make that first experience just feeding them, bring the feed out to them. Let them just come up and explore it. But then they can learn specific things like one four-wheeler is good and three four-wheelers are trouble. They can make those differentiations. I see somebody nodding their head there. They know the difference. Or they've learned, yeah, the squeeze chute's fine, the corrals are fine, but when there's extra pickups there, it's trouble. See, their memories are specific. But animals that have been nutcrackered on the head in the past, they don't forget. These are some nice little Angus and Hereford calves, about 600 pounds, and they just wouldn't go. They went through the back of the facility fine, absolutely fine. Halfway up that leader, slam on the brakes, just sit there and poop. And I tried to do the point of balance thing. That didn't work. Uh, you just, they just didn't want to go. They'd had such a bad experience. Now, if they hadn't had that smack on the head, they would have gone into that squeeze chute easily. Because I got that other graph where every day they got a big pill shoved down their throat and they got easier to handle, not harder. They don't forget. Something new is attractive if you just put it out on the pasture and let them just walk up to it. 
New things are attractive when you can just explore them, but they're scary if you shove it in their face. I'll have people say to me, my horse was fine at home, but he went berserk at the show. But you got lots of stuff there that's scary. Flags, bikes, and balloons. I call them the big three. So how do you get your horse used to flags, bikes, and balloons? Let's just park a bike out where the cattle or the horse can just come up and explore it. Then you walk it around quietly. Decorate the fence with flags and balloons. Let the animals just come up to it. Don't shove them in their face. You know, and I'm not a fan of rough training methods where things that would tie up an animal and throw stuff at it. Because you do that with the animal with a real flighty temperament, you're not going to be showing that horse or heifer. You're going to wreck it. Now, the basic principle I want to show you in this slide is when you force animals to do things, you get much more stress than when they go voluntarily. Up there on the top of this graph is beef cattle with a hot shot on every single animal. Now, and I'm always getting asked, did I get rid of hot shots? You need to never have it as a primary driving tool. Get it out of your hand. Now, occasionally, you've got some animals that just won't go and squeeze you. These ones that were pooing were getting into that department. And then you might pick it up, use it once, and then put it away, and make sure you don't bash them on the head with the squeeze shoot a second time. You know, because that's all down to previous experience. And then you, we have trained antelopes there that were trained to voluntarily cooperate during blood testing. You see, in, what this chart shows is lowering, lowering, lowering of fear stress. This is fear stress. Now, fear is a proper scientific word. It's used in the neuroscience literature. And only recently is it starting to get into veterinary and animal science literature. But animals that fear people have less piglets, the sow will have less piglets. The fearful dairy cows have a lower conception rate. Animals that are calm and gentle around people have, are more productive animals. Animals that are scared of people have lower productivity. And that is totally based in science. There are some nice, um, gentle dairy cows. I went out to your dairy today. It looked very nice. And one thing I never want to see when you go into the dairy barn, if I go in the freestall barn, is the cows run to the other end of the barn. Yep, I've been on those kind of dairies. That's not a good scene. Poor handling can have a lot of detrimental effects. You know, you force a steers to run, that's really, really bad. You can have increased bruising. Uh, high use of electric prods and pegs makes the lactate go up. The last five minutes at slaughter, really important. You put a lot of electric prods on cattle, that last five minutes before slaughter, you're going to get tougher meat. And one of the plants I've done some work with in the past is, was, is the Hiram plant, back when it was E.A. Miller. If this is the sort of thing you do to your cattle, they're going to remember it, and that's just don't. And this is a bunch of research that basically has shown that multiple shocks of electric prods have a very detrimental effect on physiology and make the lactate and the glucose uh, go way up. Here are studies that show that people that like animals have more productive animals. Stockmanship matters. When I first started my career, that was a long time ago, back in the 70s, I thought I could fix everything with equipment. If I could just build the perfect system that would fix everything, that's going to fix half of the problems. Unfortunately, a lot of clients tore up and wrecked things. You've got to have the management to go along with it. You know, having both is important. Now, you manage things that you measure. In 1999, I worked with McDonald's Corporation on uh, on implementing their animal welfare scoring. And I developed a very simple scoring system for slaughter plants. And I don't call them harvest plants. I'll call it meat plant if you want to soften it. And if you want to see some of the um, things I've done, you can look up beef plant video tour with Temple Grandin. You can look that up online, beef plant tour with Temple Grandin. And I got lots of stuff on grandin.com. It's my last name, just grandin.com. But the advantage of measuring things, it prevents bad from becoming normal. Because I would go out to a packing plant or a feed yard, do a handling seminar, come back a year later, and they were yelling and screaming in the electric prod again. What happened is it came back slowly. And they didn't realize it. That's bad from becoming normal. We've got to prevent that. So what are some of the things I'm going to score for animal handling? How many cattle run? Like when I open up the squeeze chute, how many cattle just charge out at a run? 
rather than a walk or a trot? How many fall during hand light? How many stumble down on their knee? How many moo when you catch them? Or when you're putting them in there? Now, obviously, if I brand them, they're going to moo. And they're sometimes going to moo when I put an ear tag in them. But you should be able to restrain them without them mooing. And how many did you use on the electric prod? And this big feed yard that I went to recently didn't have any electric prods at all. I'd already gotten really good measurements. But by making some other really simple changes in positioning people, I got even better handling. But what the measurements do is they prevent you from lapsing back into something that would be a very embarrassing YouTube video. We need to look at everything that we do. And uh, you wouldn't show it to all your wedding guests. Don't do it. We've got to remember, it's always there. You can never, never get away from this. Don't do anything to animals that you wouldn't want posted online. It's that simple. OK, there are also differences, and some animals are easier to handle than others. And there can be various reasons for that. Then if I measure that, I can tell. If I'm working in a packing plant, and I'm getting cattle in that I think have never had a man on foot, and they like ran over my staff, and unfortunately that happened. A lady was killed at a large plant, I'm not going to say which one, by cattle that I'm pretty sure had never been handled the man on foot. Because a security camera caught black Angus dots went like this, and black Angus dots rebounded out. And this 50-year-old lady was under the cattle. They stepped on her head and she died. So this business of teaching animals how to um, handle on foot's important. Now, horses are fine. Out in the field, fine. But when they get to a place like a packing plant and auction markets and feed yards where they're going to be bringing them up the lowing ramp on foot, bring them up to the cattle handling facility on foot, uh, it's super dangerous to get in a bunch of cattle that have never been handled on foot. Okay, in 1996, only 30% of the of all the packing plants could shoot 95% of the cattle dead with a single shot. You know why they were so bad? Broken equipment. Broken equipment. That was the reason. And then McDonald's said, okay, you know, you're going to have to fix this. And I had a very simple scoring system. Percentage stunned on the first shot. Insensibility has to be 100% before you cut them up. How percentage falling had to be 1% or less, vocalization in the restrainer, 3% or less, electric prods really low. Five scores that are outcome measures, not telling them how to build a plant. And out of 75 suppliers, only three of the beef and pork plants had to build something expensive. All this data is on my website. It's also in the, uh, the uh, JAVMA, Journal of the American Veterinary Medical Association. It uses HACCP principles. What are the important things to measure? Boy, I can tell you, I'm in a war against bureaucracy. Oh, man. Administratium. 10 years, 20 years ago, somebody put a sign on my file cabinet about administratium, the heaviest element known to man. It has an astronomical atomic weight. And it reacts with nothing because it's inert. So I want to have simple measurement things that are not just a bunch of paperwork. Boy, the paperwork we've got to go through now to do research. Like, I just want to go look at cattle. I need, like, an act of Congress to go look at cattle. You know, if a journalist, I can go do it. I can do it as grand and livestock. But, you know, that's just bureaucracy gone crazy. I put the emphasis on things I can directly observe. So we have five simple measurements plus no acts of abuse. It worked perfectly. The plants knew exactly what they had to do. And I wasn't telling them to buy all kinds of expensive, crazy things. I was amazed at some of the junky old plants, how well we got them to work with non flooring, changes in lighting, and training. Not a paperwork audit. Now, the trend now towards auditing things is to go with, with an outcome measure. All of the things I've told you are outcome measures. How many fell down? It could be a slippery floor that made them fall down, or it could be a, um, a problem with the animals. And then we, there's certain things you don't do, like uh, stick something up their butt. You don't do that. And getting away from telling you exactly how to build facilities. You've got to achieve certain outcomes. OK, let's take lameness in the dairy cow, for example. 
That is something that's an outcome of a whole lot of different conditions. Okay, in a, in when I'm doing the welfare audit, what, what am I going to look for out in the dairy? Boy, your regular cows look great. Body condition score, lameness, swollen hocks, and dirtiness. How could I have acceptable animal welfare if, if the, any one of those four things was really high? And then if they're in an enclosed building and the ammonia takes my hat off, someone needs to fail an audit real fast. There's so, certain things that are just more important than other things. Okay, I'm getting concerned that the cattle industry is starting to walk down a road that the pig industry did in the 80s. And the pig industry had disastrous results with this, leg confirmation. You can see that collapsed, um, uh, collapsed ankle there, the post-legged animal. There's a lot of fancy bulls right now that are post-legged. These bulls aren't going to be able to walk. See, as we go towards selecting cattle for you know, carcass traits, the pig industry made the mistake of select for big loins, rapid growth, thin back fat, and they got all these leg problems. And it got to the point where half the market pigs couldn't walk. I am starting to see these defects in Angus cattle. And one of my students, Casey Volmar, did her thesis on looking at cattle arriving in large feed yards in Colorado, Kansas, and Texas. And the northern cattle coming in, where the breeding would be more, you know, highfalutin breeding, they're starting to get these defects. Down south in Texas, you didn't see it. One of my students just last week saw a collapsed pasture on Angus steer. This is something that's really bad. This is genetic. And let's not make this mistake the same way the pig industry did. You know, you've got animals on range out here. These animals have got to be able to walk. And there's the pig. And I do not want to see cattle with that. It's a very bad defect. There's crooked claw. That's another defect in cattle. That's a defect. Don't let bad become normal. Well, here are some things you just don't do. Okay, when does tapping an animal become beating? From the standpoint of judging PETA videos. I have a video online called Proper Use of Livestock Driving Tools, and I smack an empty cardboard box, and when it starts to crush, that definitely starts to turn into beating. And I got a big fake plastic peg, and he's really fake. And I, he was filmed somewhere at a plant in the US, we won't say where. Okay, and then there's some input measures. There's still some things like feeder and water requirements you may need to do. All right, let's talk about some basic animal handling. Calm cattle are easier to handle. And when they get scared, they take half an hour to calm back down. So if you've got them all upset, take a break for half an hour. If you have a horse in the vet clinic and he blows up, put him in the stall and just let him calm down for half an hour. You go, you don't have time for this. Okay, you have time to break the $20,000 piece of equipment he just trashed. You've got time to go to the hospital. Yeah, let's, let's sort of put things in the right perspective here. Okay, and that horse there has got some definite uh, fear issues. I think the guy's got some pride issues. Uh, now, let's say that happens to your horse, that saddle coming off. He may get something where he feels anything on tack going around his belly blow up. That's a sensory-based fear memory. I knew a horse that was terrified of black cowboy hats because a guy had a black hat threw alcohol in his eyes. White cowboy hats are fine. Black hats were bad. Okay, what are signs that cattle and horses are starting to get fearful? Heads up, looking around, ears pinned back. They start pooping. Uh, tail switching, and tail switching in horses and cattle is not happy like dogs. Okay, and the faster it goes, and the faster it goes, the faster it goes, blows up or kicks. And eye white. You see eye white, they're getting fearful. It's a scientifically validated measure of animals getting fearful. Okay, let's look at some lighting issues that can really, really mess up cattle handling. Right here, we're working some cattle in a chute, and you're headed right direct into the bright sun. Like this blinding sun coming up on the freeway. You may need to change the time of day you handle them. Or the next facility you build, don't face your loading ramp or your squeeze chute right into the east. You know, turn it away from that. Now, at night, you can use light to attract animals. Animals tend to go from a dark place to a bright place, but they won't go into blinding light. Look at the little distractions around your facility. 
They can make animals balk. Vehicles parked around, all around, like up against the facilities. Coats on fences. Stuff hung on the fence. They notice little stuff. Now, if, let's say you have a hose on the ground or a coat on a fence, and your animals come up there, and the lead animal stops. Let the leader have time to look at it. Because when the leader goes by, the other cattle are going to follow. But if you just push them up, they'll turn back on you. If they don't like something on the ground, let's say a water bottle on the ground, that should have been picked up. But if you didn't pick it up, let the leader stop, put the head down, take a look, walk over, and then the other cattle will go. In the milking parlor, a young heifer will not want to walk over a shadow. Give her time to look at it. The old cow will walk right over it, but the young heifer's not going to walk right over it. Here's chains hanging down in the chute. Get them out of there. Why do I still have to keep talking about this stuff? Because people aren't seeing it. I want to get you to be more observant. What is your animal looking at? What is it pointing its ears at? You know, cattle can do this, horses do this. What are they looking at with their ears? Be more observant. This is the black movie theater. You've got a cattle handling facility inside a building. It's really sunny outside, and it's dark in that building, and they won't go in. Now, one of the ways you can fix this is to build a shade out over the alley, open-sided shade, which reduces the contrast between that dark movie theater building and the alley coming into it. Now, at night, this will work just fine. Light it up with artificial lights, it works fine at night. If you open up some doors, then they can um, get natural light coming in there. That's going to work just fine. Or you can take some tin off and put in white translucent panels. They've got to be able to see natural daylight coming into that building, or I'm going to have to build a shade out over the, over the um, entrance alley. OK, now you've got a situation where I've got a mud puddle in the middle of a gate. That situation, you got to give the leader time to look. Stop, put the head down, and look. Backstop gates, tie them open. Or you've got a backstop gate, and it's right there, right there. Don't make your animals go clumping through those backstops. Maybe hook it up with a remote control rope so you can hold it open. I'm actually going to hate backstops. I'd rather have a sliding door right there at, the, at that entrance. And then I can just open it up and then close it after the cattle. Because sometimes the backstops are hard to put, pull up and down. But you leave it there for them to go clumping through, they're not going to go in as easy. Now, if you look at that uh, tan animal, its ear is looking right at me taking the picture. That's what that ear on that tan animal is doing. That's the kind of thing I want you to observe. When you're working in the corrals and you're bringing animals up to the crowding pen squeeze shoot area, move small groups. Good handling is going to require a lot more walking. Fill your crowd pen half full. Yeah, going to take more walking? Fill it half full. And one gate that always needs to be solid is your back gate behind your animals. That should always be a solid gate to help prevent them from turning back. Fill it half full. Now this shows the flight zone really nicely in shape. You've got animals that have got some flight zone. It's like a bubble around the people there, sort of a force field around the people. And if you can position yourself just right at a gate, the cattle will just come right around that force field and go out the gate. If you have a completely tame animal, it's got no flight zone at all. Now, the weird thing that happened with these that had been bashed on the head with a squeeze chute is they had flights on like this in the back part of the handling facility. And then I brought them up to the crowd pen. They were just fine. Halfway up the lead-up chute, slam on the brakes, clamp down their tails, and do diarrhea. And I could touch them, and they didn't care about the flight zone. And they were really scared. They weren't just being stubborn. They were scared. If they'd had better previous experience in that squeeze chute, they would have just gone right on in. Okay, when you think about the flight zone, you go out in a pasture full of cattle, or maybe a big feed yard pen full of cattle, and you walk up close, they'll turn away. Those black cattle there are turning away. But then your tan animal there is turning and looking at me. 
So you kind of have two zones. You've got the flight zone that when you penetrate it, they move away. But then you've got a zone of awareness. Some people will call it the pressure zone, where they know you're there, but all they do is watch. And in my Humane Livestock Handling book, which unfortunately is not here, uh, but you can pick it up on Amazon really easily, Humane Livestock Handling. Amazon has it nice and cheap, Humane Livestock Handling. I've got diagrams that, have got, that show this. But just sort of think, there's kind of three zones. There's a, there's a zone of these cattle, they don't even know I'm there. This guy knows I'm here and he doesn't feel he has to get up yet, but he's watching. And these guys, I've entered the flight zone and they've turned away from me. Okay, this is a handy dandy thing that usually works to get them in the squeeze chute if they haven't been bashed on the head before, you know, in their previous time. And it's kind of counterintuitive. What you do is step forward, you step forward and quickly walk back by him. And if you quickly walk back and stop here, this guy will go in the squeeze chute. Now what you don't want to do is stand here and poke its butt. It's the most common mistake. You stand here, poke the butt. And when you're right up close to him in the chute, that point of balance is right at the shoulder. You've got to get past that point of balance. You get out in the pasture, the point of balance may be further forward. Now I've got all of these diagrams on grandon.com and I've got them in the Humane Livestock Handling book. So let's just pretend this is the tailgate of a squeeze chute and we got some cattle that they've been handled nicely in the past. And I step forward and I quickly walk back by them, kind of quick like that. It works. It works. Sometimes you can just go on there, on the right here in the withers and just go down their spine. That sometimes works. But this is one of the keys, getting rid of electric prods to get animals into the squeeze chute. Okay, now there's some con lot of conversation going on among people that are working on low stress handling about whether you should have open or solid sides on chutes. We're going to discuss that. Now in this facility right here, it's got a solid outer perimeter fence. That's where you need the solid sides to block all the pickups and everything that are out there. But the inner fence is see-through. Now if you have an open side, kind of imagine that the flight zone of the cattle is like a force field now that's going to come out of that open side. So you've got an area around that you must stay away from it except when it's time to move the cattle. Because if you stand inside there, they're going to start to get all antsy like this. And then you back up and they'll be fine. But you've got to stay out of an area along the chute that might be 10 feet away from it, maybe 15 feet away from it. You've got to stay away from it. Here's an animal rearing in the chute and it's rearing because you're too deep inside the flight zone. Back up, back up. All that guy would have to do is just back up, get out of the flight zone, and look at where the ear is. The ear is looking right at the guy, and I caught you guy, whoops, you got an electric prod where you shouldn't have one. Um, yeah, right there, you're carrying an electric prod. You shouldn't be doing that. It's not your primary driving tool. But on the other hand, I'm not gonna suggest banning them. Because you get an animal sometimes that won't go, it's better than hard tail cranking. This particular facility has got a solid outer side, you see him partially see-through here, and he's standing way too close. He needs to get back. See, now this is getting into the art of stockmanship. <coughs> and just changing a few things. In the feed yard I visited recently, there was a guy back here, sort of just flapping his streamer and squirting grubicide medicine on him, back here, making him kind of crazy. I had him come up here where he just reach over the side, take the little squirt through thing and just go down their back, put the streamer away that he was flapping, everything calmed down. Now they were already passing their measurements. They were already passing that, they were already passing the audit. But just moving the guy made a difference. Another thing you need to be doing is use following behavior. Wait until there's room in the single file before you bring up the next bunch. Because if I bring up the next bunch, when a single file is full, they all turn around. Because another behavior cattle have is, go back to where I came from. I want to go back to where I come from. I like to look at people and know where they're at, keep my distance, and I want to go back to where I come from. And you need to have enough single file shoot length 
So you can use some following behavior. Now you don't want to get them too long. There's some evidence that too long is bad. But you don't want to shoot that this holds one or two cows. I'd like to be able to bring up maybe four, four at a time and get them to follow on in. Now one place you need a solid side is, when, is in the squeeze chute. Because I, if you're working on a manual chute, you've got to be deep in that flight zone. You're going to be right there, right close to them. And try putting a piece of cardboard on the back half of the squeeze chute. It works just great. Just try it. Back half of the squeeze chute. Cover it up. They'll come in easier. OK, open sides versus solid sides. If I have an open side on a chute, I've got to keep a people-free zone around it. I don't want any vehicles parked around it. I want a whole big area of nothing around it. And then you only go in there to move your animals. It's going to require more stockmanship skill to have an open side. And it will work if the cattle are acclimated to low stress and good stockmanship. Or I can have a solid side. Uh, I always think the outer perimeter, if there's any commotion going around, should be solid. Especially around truck loading ramps where you've got vehicles. Really wild cattle make it solid. Or less skilled people. There's kind of two approaches to designing facilities. I can make something really simple and economical, but it's going to be more skill dependent. Or I can make something that's uh, more expensive, but I can train somebody in one afternoon to use it. So if I'm in a big feed yard with a lot of employee turnover, I probably want to go with the more expensive, less skill required. If I've got you know, nice tame cattle and I know good stockmanship, uh, I could go with something I can make with portable panels. OK, this just shows um, one of my curved facilities. There's a nice slide gate. I'd rather have that there than a backstop. This outer perimeter I want to make solid. But if you make this inner perimeter see-through, you'd have to have a whole big half circle here with no people in it. I've actually drawn a line. And when I stepped over that line, the cattle would start to jump around. And when I backed up, they'd back up. You have to have a whole big people-free zone in that whole half circle. When you lay out a crowd pen, it's very important. Make it in a half circle. <coughs> and they've got to be designed so that when the cattle standing right there, they can see up the two body lengths. Uh, lots of tubs are laid out wrong. Well, and tubs laid out wrong don't work very well. Got to lay them out right. This shows the right and the wrong way to lay out a tub. You lay it out wrong, it won't work. You want a full half circle so they're going back to where they came from. I just went in your sheep facility today. That's very nice, very similar to this. Just comes right on around, and then those sheep are going back to where they come from. And that works really, really well. Now this is a more economical design I've come up with, and it's in my Humane Livestock Handling book. I do have a few copies of this design with me that I can give to people that might be really interested. But the principle here is you bring your animals up, and I shut this crowd gate right here. Then I stand here on this little catwalk with a flag, and guess what? They'll come right on around and be going back to where they come from. And then solid on the outside, and I got rid of all the catwalks. There's been a bunch of these built. They also work really well with portable panels. A lot of people today don't know how to weld anymore. Well, it used to be. Take the sheet steel, take scrap steel, make all kinds of stuff. Now more and more new people getting into, into ranching are going, going with portable panels. This can be made very easily out of portable panels. This is another layout, solid on the outer perimeter. And then you're working this whole inner part. But I'm going to have an area, like from about here to here, where you stay out of there, except when it's time to move animals. Then if I want to move an animal, I might step forward and go like that. Or maybe just step forward and go like, a little bit like that, and then back up. Or if I do the get him in the squeeze shoe, step forward, go like that. Do that little movement pattern. OK, a lot of people have asked about the bud box. It's a very, very simple layout that you can make out of portable panels. This is an example of something that's very economical, but much more skill dependent. This would not be something for beginners, because you're in there with them. But the principle is, you put the animal in here, put them in here, shut the door, and then they're going to come back to where they come from. But you're standing here. Remember how the sheep had the bubble? And they're coming on around. 
This is something that's much more skill dependent, but very economical, and if you're hauling portable panels around, it can work well. But if you've got super wild, crazy things that have never been handled on foot, uh, this wouldn't, wouldn't be such a good idea unless you make a real big one and put a horse on it. Yeah, that fixes it fine on the ranch, and then when I get them at the packing plant to kill somebody. Uh, you must make sure this has to be an open fence. There's no vehicles here or dogs out here. They be better be seeing just nothing. And this gate has to be solid and never overload this. Never overload it because you're likely to get gate pushed back in your face. But where this is the most appropriate thing is if I have to take portable panels around the different pastures, this can be set up in portable panels. I think I'm going to go with something like this for the more permanent you know, facilities. You know, flags or paddles or maybe no driving aid. Some people are trying to say, well, let's not even have a driving aid at all. But sometimes I need a driving aid just to reach out into the crowd pen and get some animals turned. That just shows those shoots again. So two design concepts. I can go simple and economical, but requires more stockmanship skill, or it's more expensive, but unskilled people can use it more easily. OK, I've got to have non-slip flooring. Animals go berserk when they start to slip. OK, on squeeze chutes, yeah, you tighten down the pressure relief valve. Yeah, it makes it move faster. But you know what? If you get the handling all calmed down in the back, you don't need to have that squeeze chute going like that. You fix your handling in the back, they should be walking into that squeeze chute. Walking in, walking out. You know, some people are so proud of the fact they can catch them in mid-flight. Well, I don't want them in mid-flight. I want them coming in, and you're going to have less poop to clean up because they haven't pooped all over your work area and squirted it up on the ceiling and everything else. Keep them calm, and they're going to perform better for you. Get rid of dogs around shoots. Dogs around shoots teach cattle to kick. Another dangerous thing. And you have uh, situations where cattle have been bitten by dogs. They'll often come out of the crowd pen like a race car and go down that chute super fast because I think they can get out of there before the dog bites them. Non-slip flooring. All right, let's see how good an observer you are. How many people saw that animal looking at the sunbeam? Looking, OK. Oh, we're doing lousy on this. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, come on. I want you guys, the next time you work, Cal, I want you to get a whole lot more observant. But now you look at that, and that's obvious. Now, this is a really nice rubber mat, Double D Family Mat Company. I do not have any commissions from them, but it's a very nice mat. There's my website, grandon.com. All the layouts are on grandon.com.